Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon from Garrus.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Terex Fast GTX Surround from Adidas. Now if you're a longtime viewer, subscriber, reader of Garrus.com then you probably know, especially if you see my stuff, that I really like pieces of gear that aren't just one thing, that they can fill multiple categories. Well the thing we're looking at today, this boot right here, the Terex Fast GTX Surround, man that's a mouthful, this is one such thing. It is a boot by all appearances, a fast hiking boot, but there's a little more to it. So without any further ado, let's get into talking about it. Now interestingly, this boot right here has so many things in common with the Terex Boost GTX. You can check out that review right here. This is something that we did a while ago and in this review there are so many similarities between these two that you will hear me referring back and forth to them all the time. In fact, the first place where we're going to take a look at that is the outsole of this guy right here because it is identical to the Terex Boost GTX, which was a running shoe or a hiking shoe, and I use it as a running shoe or hiking shoe as well. So rather than reinventing the wheel to talk about this guy, I'm actually just kind of going to rehash the outsole part of the review from the Terex Boost GTX because again, it is identical in design, it is identical in material, both use continental rubber, that's what it looks like, they both look the same. So. Here we go. When originally talking about the Terex Boost GTX outsole, and likewise in the Terex Fast GTX Surround, one of the things that I said at the outset was that it is not hyperbole, one of the things I'm about to say right now, and that is that the outsole rubber on this guy is spectacular. Now, since we first reviewed that shoe, we have reviewed other shoes by Adidas or Adidas that uses continental rubber, and bar none, that is one of my favorite rubbers out there in the market. It does a fantastic job. The grip is spectacular. For years, I personally have been a huge fan of continental bike tires, both mountain bike tires as well as road bike tires and those are the tires that I seem to keep coming back to even if I find something that's a little more cheap or actually a lot cheaper the stickiness and the grip and the durability of that rubber is amazing and thankfully some of those design elements came over to this shoe right here including the durability and stickiness of this rubber this is a full contact outsole as you can see here there's no huge cutaway there are a couple lugs missing right here under the midfoot or the instep there the arch but in general it's full contact outsole which really makes for smooth transition from either the midfoot forward or the heel of the shoe forward. That outsole material also carries up and in front of the toe right here, which I'd like to say that I used a little more than I'd care to admit, but that's okay. Clumsiness aside, it all works out. The lugs themselves are five millimeters deep, generally as a rule. There are a few where the kind of the contour of the outsole kind of shapes up a little bit, so that right about here on this side and right over here on this side, they are about seven millimeters deep. They are laid out directionally, as you can see, the front kind of face back, the back kind of faces forward. These are, of course, to account for ascending or descending at different speeds and keeping that traction really intact. Now, generally speaking, you can find shoes where one thing handles well on loose rocks, but not so great on some smooth flat rocks and things like that where the material is really what's doing the grip instead of the cleat system. This is one of those shoes where I have yet to find something where it really doesn't excel gripping. Yes, there could be deeper lugs out there. Yes, there could be less wide. You can see these are pretty wide lugs. There could be more pointy lugs to get down into looser material, but generally as an overall lug system, this really excels and is fantastic in my opinion. Now with regard to durability, I have put roughly 50 to 60 miles on this guy and that includes something that I'm going to talk about later, not just hiking, let me just say that. This has gone up Gray's Peak with me and Baby Gearist as well as several other hikes which were super, super rocky and technical in places, in addition to some more smooth buffed out things. And in any case, I had to literally kind of take the shoe and go like this to find really any signs of wear at all. And the only place you really find any wear is kind of on the leading edge of some of these lugs. And it's not really where to speak of, it's what you would expect after like walking around the block for the first time. So with that said, my love affair of the Continental and of this outsole in particular continues. Now let's get into talking about the midsole of this guy, which is where some of the coolest technology takes part in the shoe. The midsole of this shoe is where something really unique takes place, and that is a really cool partnership between Adidas, or Adidas, and Gore-Tex. Now Gore-Tex is really protective of the things that they allow to be done with their fabric, so in this case, it was really unique to be able to get them to work with Adidas on this cool setup. Now as you can see here we've got these channels cut in that kind of go on the midsole right there and they seem to go under the foot. In fact they do go under the foot. If we were to be able to peel this off you would see that underlying it is a series of crosshatch channels. Kind of just channels cut diagonally from one side to the other in multiple directions. 
The reason that this is there is because they want to allow for airflow and as it turns out, some water flow, which I'll mention in a second. This is where the surround part of this surround in this name comes from, giving that 360 degree ventilation to the shoe. Now, Brandon, you might say, what about the breathability that sometimes Gore-Tex has some issues with? Well, number one, Gore-Tex has really been working on their technology over the years to make some really super permeable or impermeable membranes that are still gonna be really nice and breathable and lightweight. In this case, what they've done is, yes, the upper here is still the same Gore-Tex that is really, really solid, super waterproof, but they've gone with a thinner material underfoot, which is going to be no less waterproof, but still allow for that airflow. And having stood in water on multiple occasions in this, it's really, really cool to feel that water flowing right under your foot. This boot came with me on hikes of several hours and several miles with myself alone and with baby gearist, including up again, as I mentioned earlier, Gray's Peak and some things like that, where you would really think that there would be a more burly boot necessary, but this thing is so sticky and so versatile and so agile that it was something I never really felt I had to have a heavier boot for. And as for temperature regulation, I never really felt this getting warm at all. Yes, it was during kind of some of the summer months and I also took it up into some of the higher elevations for some early season snow. I never felt myself getting overly hot and more importantly, though we haven't really hit the really kind of dog days of winter yet, I haven't felt my foot getting cold in this. And there was plenty of room, as I'll talk about in the fit, for a heavier sock if that's what you so desire. Now, as I get into the upper of the Terex Fast GTX Surround, I will say that I want to submit an idea to you guys. Okay, you know, there are these comparisons that I've been drawing while the Boost Foam is what appears not in this shoe, the Boost Foam is what appears in the Terex Boost GTX. I want to submit the idea that there are so many similarities in this and the setup is so similar. And actually, if you take this part off right here, you have a shoe. And in fact, the similarities are so much so that I would say that this is not just a hiking boot, but it's a trail running shoe too. Now, before you go getting all up in arms, as I almost did when I submitted this idea to myself, I was like, whoa, what are you talking about? Hey, calm down, man. This is something where the similarities really exist so much so that it just makes sense. Now, pardon me for not having the Terex Boost GTX here. It is buried in a box somewhere and I could not find it in time to film this review. So you'll just have to bear with me and some pictures right over here from time to time. First of all, the mesh on this thing is very, very similar, pretty much identical to that shoe. And it's actually very supple for being such a beefy material. I mean, you can see how this collapses and folds down. It's not something that's going to really fight against your foot. And again, this, again, spills into me saying that this could easily be used as a running shoe. As with that shoe, there's also a welded rand. This part that goes right around here goes about two thirds, actually a little more than halfway around the shoe. And that's going to not only protect the toes and the foot to some degree, but it's also going to have that really good sense of cohesion between the upper and the midsole, which is going to keep the foot nicely in place with a really solid fit. The kind of minimal toe cap that we see right here isn't super, super beefy, but there is plenty there right up on the toe to really protect those toes. And again, it goes back into that rand, which is going to further keep the pokey things that come in from the side out of the way. Now, the rear of the shoe is where there is quite a departure on the upper of this guy. This is where we've got some really kind of a heavier version, almost the same as this toe cap version of the welding that comes up and around. And then kind of a plastic cradle, which comes right back here to form a really nicely formed a heel cup in the rear of this shoe. Keep the foot nicely in place. It's gonna feel great on some runs if you choose to do that, but definitely on some hikes, especially when you get on more off-camber terrain where you're gonna want that foot to seat nicely in the heel cup. Now, of course, there is the internal Gore-Tex, which we can see right down in there. Again, it's identical to the Terex Boost GTX. And then we've also got the speed lace system, which we see right here, and it's literally identical. It's the same system, except this extends up on this collar piece, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. These speed laces are adjustable. If you've got too much length in them, you can simply open this part up right here, cut off the excess and readjust those things. And then it's got this lace bungee right here to keep it under control. What's up guys? Pardon the small interruption in this review, but if you'd like to read the written review of this or see some more of those buy links where you guys can find the cheapest prices on this piece of gear that we're talking about today, definitely check that on that subscription. And while you're at it, like, favorite, and subscribe to this video. We will see you soon. And now let's get back to the review. Now, the next thing I point out, and this is what makes a functional and visible difference between the Terex Boost GTX and the Terex 
surround, Terex Fast GTX surround, man, that is a mouthful, is this collar piece up here. Now this is actually super, super lightweight, malleable. It's nice padded microfiber material with some Gore-Tex on the inside. And truly, this really acts like more of kind of a, a high ankled gaiter of sorts than really anything else. But it is certainly what gives this the appearance of the boot and if snugged down enough in that area would tend to add a little bit more support to the ankle. Rounding out the upper is the gusseted tongue, which is gusseted right up to there, right where the normal shoe would end, pretty much in the same place, maybe about a half inch longer than in the Terex Boost GTX. It's kind of running low top counterpart. That gusset extends right up to there, and the tongue itself is a combination of this thin synthetic uh, faux leather material and then this mesh down here. Now, with all that information in mind, here is why I think that this right here is a good trail running shoe. After my first couple times out in it, I started to realize that this really is the same. You take this off right here, just this collar piece, take it off of the shoe, and you have the Terex Boost GTX. It's the same shoe. Now, of course, there are some visible elements, including this beefier heel counter right here that I mentioned a second ago, but in general, it's the same thing. Now, of course, in that shoe, you do have the Boost Foam down in the midsole with the EVA carrier in that, and this, you've just got the basic kind of EVA that's open with those channels, but, Apart from that, it's really the same shoe. And on each of the runs that I decided to take the shoe on, it performed exactly as its counterpart would. The possible exception to that rule is a little bit of rubbing that happened up here with the tongue. So my first time out, this tongue wraps far enough back that it kind of wraps around the front side of your ankle. And as it did, as my foot would flex forward in there, this would kind of collapse back against the side, kind of the lateral side of my not my shin, but my lower leg, and it created a little bit of a rubbing point. On my second run, and any hikes or runs after that, what I did was wear a sock that was a little higher, either a mid-calf version or a knee-high version, what have you, and that took any rubbing out of the picture. Now, as far as durability goes, if you read the Terex Boost GTX review, you will notice that the Terex Fast GTX Surround, there is very little, like, I guess I would say no durability breakdown in this altogether. I mean, I've gotten, again, about 50 or 60 miles in this and there's really nothing to speak of. I literally had to, once again, as with the outsole, hold it up to my face I look so closely and this, I've beat the hell out of this thing and there is really no wear. Now I'm not saying that you can't tear it, you can certainly try, but I have noticed no wear on this in the time that I've been wearing it. As we get into talking about the fit of this shoe, once again, this is where those similarities really come to bear in that this fits exactly the same as the Terex Boost GTX. It's a very aggressive fit. I think it's not really racing flat fit, but you can see it is a more aggressive fit, kind of closer to the foot. Now, online I have read some customer views that have been in this. There's some people that say, well, I have a wider foot and this fit me fine. This fits my average foot very, very well. But those same customer reviews also bear out some people going, man, I really love the construction, the feel and the grip and so on and so forth. I just wish there were more room in the forefoot because I have a wider foot. As you can see, there is need as with that shoe to have a little more lateral room in the forefoot for some wiggle and splay of the toes. These speed laces do a great job of holding the foot down. I really didn't have any problem with that apart from allowing again, a little more room up in the forefoot. But but even on descents, I really didn't notice that being a factor. The heel cup is a good thing. It's really, really solid and beefy. And on that off-camber terrain, on those off-camber hikes and even some off-camber runs, I really noticed my heel kind of as the steering point of that shoe being really nice in that rear foot. And especially when you're doing a walking game, because walking does land on the heel, then roll to the toe, as opposed to running, which usually lands on the midfoot, rolls to the forefoot. This does a nice job of keeping things stable, starting that off in the rear foot as it rolls forward to the midfoot and the forefoot. As for sizing, this is a size 11, just as with the Terex Boost GTX. The Terex Fast GTX Surround fits right where I would expect it to be in my size 11s. If you have a problem with Adidas in the past and you feel like they run a little snug on you, I would certainly recommend sizing to where you've worn them in the past. Now the performance of this shoe is one of those places where the ride comes in, ride being a term I would normally reserve for a running shoe, and then things more oriented to hiking performance. And both of these are actually one of the places where the distinct kind of operations of the shoe tend to separate from its predecessor, the Terex Boost GTX. And the main reason for that is that that shoe has boost foam and this does not. First, as a hiker, this performed exceedingly well. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, the traction on this is great. On off-camber terrain, on even some really kind of class three plus scrambling, this does a really great job giving that excellent grip, especially as you pitch uphill. The lugs themselves, which I mentioned to you guys a few seconds ago, these are excellent. They clear mud very, very well. They are big and beefy lugs that grip onto the 
the smallest crack in a rock. And apart from that, the material, that continental rubber in there really sticks to whatever you need it to. Now as a running shoe, I was really impressed with this. Yes, the grip and the traction are very similar to the Terex Boost GTX because it is after all the same shoe in the outsole game. Now the midsole, that material, since it's got all those channels cut into it, it's actually quite flexible as you can see here, especially in the forefoot, but even in the heel, it can flex up a little bit. This is a really added advantage for those that want a more agile shoe. Of course, if you're looking for that traditional really rigid and just kind of beefy hiking boot underfoot, that's not gonna be where this is. And that's what I think one of the things that makes it able to kind of do double duty as a running shoe. Yes, it is a little bit weird, strange, if you will, running around in something that looks and feels sometimes like a boot. And this is not generally something that I would do in warmer weather. However, I decided that this would be a good testing point for this. And I did take it up into some that early season high country snow and it performed exceedingly well. I could easily see this being one of those things that if you take it up high or in the winter where you've got a snowy run that turns into a snowy slog, this would certainly be a good shoe to bring along. And if you combine this with a gator, you've got that much more protection for snow coming into the shoe. Now the downside of this, as far as a shoe goes, is probably one of the upsides for this as a boot goes, and that is the weight. My men's size 11 comes in at 15.7 ounces or 450 grams for a running shoe, a trail running shoe. This is heavy. It's not the heaviest, and it's certainly on par with some other things out there that are definitely classified as running shoes. Now, for a trail hiking shoe, a light hiker, this is a really good thing. Yes, it, there are lighter shoes out there, but this thing actually only comes in one ounce more than its counterpart, the Terex Boost GTX. Now look, I'm pitching these to you guys as a shoe that could be a hiking boot, it can be a winter trail running shoe, it could be a summer trail running shoe if you wanted to, as long as you're okay with running around in what looks to be a boot. But if you just decide to wear it as one or the other, I promise you that the construction, the quality that we've got here is really, really fantastic. Now. That's probably a good thing since the price tag of this shoe right here is so steep. And it is steep, be sure about that. This comes in at $225. Now, hold on a second before you get all freaked out. Please check those buy links down below because that's gonna be a spot where we're really gonna have some better prices if they're out there. We're gonna check all our affiliate partners, whether it's Amazon or what have you, to see if we can get you guys a better price on this. Yes, it is steep, I'm not gonna deny that. But first, it's Adidas, what do you expect? Second, the durability of this thing is excellent. I'm not saying that I like the price. I would love to see that come down below the $200 mark. And again, for a running shoe, it is a bit heavy. That is something that could be a detractor for many people, but the burly trade-off is definitely there. If you're looking for something like that, this could be something that could solve a lot of those problems and be sort of a one-shoe quiver, depending on what those activities you're looking to do are. Now guys, before we get into the question of the day, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That means so much and helps us here at Gears. We're trying to keep the lights on and you guys help a lot. If you can, those buy links, those links down in the description where we give you guys links to everything, those are a great way to help support Gears because we find you the lowest prices on those things through our affiliate partners. And it also gives us a little bit of a commission, which basically helps send my kid to college one of these days. So thank you so much for that. Now for our question of the day, and this relates directly to something like the boot that you guys have just seen me talk about. And that is, is there a piece of gear that you have that is meant or by all appearances looks like this. It looks like it's gonna be a hiking boot, but then you can also run in it. Is there a piece of gear where you are more than comfortable going outside of its visibly intended purpose to do something else? What is that switchblade, Swiss Army knife piece of gear for you? We wanna hear down in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for letting us know. And thank you once again for spending a few minutes with us today. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out on all the socials or by emailing info at gearist.com. Now, get out there, get sweaty. We'll see you next time.